I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you one quick little thing. I won't take very much time here, but this is uh, basically some of the training stuff that we've got. And you know, there's a lot of ways that you can approach this. What this does for me is it saves me a lot of time as far as trying to train people. So uh, let me come over to uh, funding. Here we go, REI Pro. So the little card that you've got here on the table is uh, something called REI Pro. This is uh, Chris Gall. This guy I've been following because he's really good at doing flips and rehabs and training and all that kind of stuff. And although I do training, you know, we talked with Paul Fink about automate and delegate. And uh, this really is a good form of automated delegating. I know that you're doing some really good stuff. And you're doing it, which is really good. I'm not doing the training. I, I do some training, but I'm not making a package like you do. So this just goes to show you that you can find somebody out there and you can integrate that into whatever you're doing. And if you're looking to learn how to do some of this stuff, this will just show you what his package will do if it runs, which it should. Maybe it won't. Okay. Okay. Well, it looks like we're not getting much of an internet connection, but basically what this will do is it will find cash buyers, it will find vacant homes, it will look for all the different types of deals that you're looking for and what they did is they met the people at the National RIA and said hey look we know there's a lot of people doing this business we want to try to offer something we will you know put this out to all the different uh, real estate clubs and let people start seeing what this product will do and I use it to kind of help train my people that are looking for properties okay so you know, as we move forward with this, <clears throat> let me come back over to uh, NHBid. Okay. Might Train. be the projector mode because it's not showing up on the screen what you're doing. Okay. Here we go. Hey. So this gives you kind of an idea of the training and the different things that you get for working with me in your training. And if you decide on this particular product, you can go to them direct. You can get a discount going through the National RIA, going through the Santa Barbara RIA, and pay about twelve, thirteen hundred dollars a year. Um, if you decide that you want somebody to handhold, to be with you, to talk with you, to coach you, or whatever. Basically, I give access to this for free, but it's $800 a year for me to work with you. So, you know, you're getting a bit of a discount there on that. Um, and let me just see if I have Pro. Maybe we might get to it another way. And yeah, work. there you go. There we go. <laughs> so, uh, isn't that interesting? Well, you, you, just, you just hit the full screen too if you want. Okay. Well, that's if it works. Ah. In any case, I'm not going to try to run the video because it's just not working on the internet right now. But really, what I've got is kind of two separate businesses. One is National Home Buyers LLC, where we do. Uh, long-term, short-term kind of rentals, so you do it as long as you want, where you can joint venture with people, you can just buy it yourself, we can help you get into a rental property, and go anywhere from two to five years on lease to own with tenants. And the reason I found lease to own to be so nice is because we have the tenants actually be responsible for all repairs, we have the investors be responsible for the taxes insurance, because if that's not paid, that could be a real problem. 
And what you end up with is a different quality of tenants because people who are thinking about buying the house always treat it better, they always stay longer, and they're just a lot more fun to work, to work with. You don't really need to have uh, management companies. I hate to say it, but there are good management and there are bad management. And you can have management companies be worse than your worst tenants. An example, I had a property in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, and I got a bill for $500 on a new washing machine. And I called up the tenants and I said, so how's that new washing machine working? And they said, what new washing machine? So I called up the management company and I said, hey, uh, I got a bill here for 500 bucks for a new washing machine. And they said, yeah. And so I called up the tenants to see how they liked it. And they said, what? We didn't get any new washing machine. What do you think the response was? We're the management company, you're not supposed to be talking to them. I said, no, uh, you're talking to me like I'm maybe a tenant, but actually I'm your boss because you're managing my property, or at least you were before I fired you. <laughs> Goodbye, <laughs> you're not working for me anymore. So, you know, when you're doing lease to owns, you actually have a much better relationship with the people in the homes. You don't really need management companies. They'll self-manage. And the other thing that I found is that, you know, we had properties, and we still do, here in California, in the expensive part. And I kind of looked at the numbers and said, well, you know, we could go to the Midwest, and we could have $50,000, $100,000 properties, and make three times as much cash flow. Well, the numbers look good, but what's the reality? $500,000 home or 20 or 30, you know, $50,000, $100,000 properties, you're going to spend a whole lot more money fixing those properties up because you've got lots of properties to deal with, you've got lots of turnover, you've got vacancy, you've got tenant problems. Even a lease to own in the Midwest, wherever you're doing it, is still better than a standard rental. But I've kind of gone full circle in the last 10 or 20 years and said, hey, you know, I'll never do another rental property again except for what I just really want to hang on to. I'm not going to go to the Midwest and try and get higher cash flow because reality is it isn't higher in the long run. I would much rather come back to the West Coast, Oregon, Washington, California, Florida, New York, any place on the coast where prices are higher, have fewer properties, have higher cash flow, from those properties, even though you look at some place like Santa Barbara and say, hey, well, it doesn't cash flow, you know? You'd be negative when you got into something like that. Here's the reality. If you're gonna do this long term, everything else is nothing but another job, which is kind of nice, because I don't wanna get fired, so I created my own job, right? Don't wanna get fired. But the reality is it's still a job. The true wealth from all real estate is increase in value over time. And the properties of the Midwest, they don't really increase in value. They a little bit here and there. The properties where they go in big swings, where they go really down low, or they'll come up really high. Real estate goes like this, okay? And you gotta know when to get in and out, you gotta know what to do, but overall it goes like this, especially in places like California, Oregon, Nevada, Washington, and for somebody who's young, you've got 20 or 30 years for this to increase in value. That's where the true wealth really is. So, you want to work in markets where you know it's going to go up. And the other thing is you want to look in markets that are actually going up. Okay, there's a site out there called Kenway. Um, can't remember the name of the actual website. Housing Alerts. That's it. Housing Alerts. And they've got all these statistics and stuff on where the market's going up or down. And his whole thing is, is the market stupid? Okay, meaning that if you're out trying to do rehabs and flips in a market that's going down, you know, you really want to be doing that in a market that's going up. So that no matter what happens, and no matter what problem you have, the longer it takes, the more the property increases where you do something or not. It's going up with the market. But if you start working in a market that's already going down, you gotta get that rehab done really quick, get in, get out, you know, 
because it can be uh, very difficult if you don't. There's a lot of people who do fix and flips that in the down markets go out of business. You've got to be really good to hit a down market, okay? So that's one of the things we do with National Home Buyers LLC is those types of uh, leased owned properties. I'd much rather come back and do higher end properties. The other thing is National Home Buyers Investors Group, which is NH Big, is really a wholesale business. So there's two businesses. One is investment income, which tax wise is different from earned income. And earned income is really wholesaling where you don't really fix anything. You just move it to somebody else. You, you've earned some money from marking it up, and you've gotten a capital gain that's earned income. So that's the other business, and that's where we're, you know, helping people learn how to do that. You know, if you don't have the money to invest, then you've got time. So you need to invest some time, and you need to have some education people to work with. Okay. Um, but if you do have money to invest, then National Home Buyers is, you know, something we can help you with there too. Um, I found it very interesting on uh, the discussion that Chris had on Lancaster for solar and that investing in land. Um, really good people that we've had here today. I really appreciate the speakers we've had. Linda, I really appreciate what you've done for pulling all these people together and having something like this available for us. And uh, it doesn't last forever, right? So you got to take those opportunities and advantages when you can and just know that this is not a business that you can do real quick and make a whole lot of money. It's all, it, it takes time to learn it, it takes time to work it, and know that it's a kind of a retirement career. So whatever job you do have that has money coming in is gold. You keep moving forward to doing this as a retirement and some people retire in their 20s and go do it full time, right? So the better you get I don't at it. I myself as retired, but yes. <laughs> That's exactly retired. right. You're, yeah. you're working your retirement job, and you're a perfect example. Um, if you really get down what, how to do this business, and you spend enough time on it, like Paul Fink says, and that's probably been one of my mistakes as far as mentoring and, and helping people learn, because we've got Abraham in here that works with me. We've got other people that do. You really need to show them some expectations of, it's going to take you 100 offers in a month, and you might get one deal. If, you, if I'm not real clear with people on that, they're gonna do five or 10 and go, oh, this doesn't work, I give up. So, a retirement job that nobody can fire you at, um, it's a wonderful thing. National Home Buyers LLC, Michael here, my son, we created a, a Michael V LLC and put some properties with some investors in his. My daughter said, how do I get to college? How do I fund college? I would tell her, you know, I'm always here to pay half of whatever you guys want to do. She said, I want to go and be an attorney. And you're telling me at Harvard you're only going to pay half of it? And I said, no, I'm telling you that I'll only pay half of anything in your life. <laughs> you're going to have to pay the other half. So, you know, she said, okay, well, how are we going to do this? She came back a couple days later and said, well, that's too expensive. I don't want to pay half of that. I would like to be a nurse. How are we going to do that? We created an Alana Lee LLC. We put about four properties in there with joint investors, joint partners, and they get half the rent and half the profit. She gets half the rent and half the profit when it sells. I looked at her and said, do you care if it takes 10 or 20 years to pay off your student debt because you're not going to ever have to pay a dime over? She said, well, that's a little different than what we're talking about, but it sounds pretty good. Okay. So there are ways to do different structured real estate deals specifically on what you want. And the thing is, you don't, you're not always the same. You know, you hear people say, well, this is the way to do it for everybody. It's not, there's not one size that fits all. In fact, there's not even one size that fits you in five years, just as it didn't fit you five years ago because your life changes constantly and you just have to keep looking at every moment and going, okay, what works for me today? So one of the things that in the training that we'll offer, if anybody wants to get involved, is goal setting. And here's a really thing, weird thing that we found out about goal setting. Everybody in here, you know, you know what goals are like. You either work them just by yourself or you get really focused on it. 
One of the things that I found out when we've been really focused on it, and like right now I'm not as focused as I was when I was a couple years ago trying to set these LOCs for my son and my daughter. It's like, oh man, I'm really going to have to do this. I start working with people and say, okay, you need three major goals in your life that you want to get within 12 months. And these have to be so hard and so difficult, you'll never get them in three months. It's not like, well, I'm taking the trash, oh, well, I did my goal today, you know, I'm so happy. That can be it if it relates, but that's not what's going to happen in 12 months. So I start at the end, and then I start at the back and work forward. So I say, okay, three goals, 12 months, what's it going to be? And then we go maybe three months up, you know, break it up into quarters, and every quarter of the year is another three goals until we get to a month and then to a week. And all those goals have to somehow relate to what you want at the end of 12 months. Okay? They have to relate. It could be whatever, but they have to have some relationship. Well, here's what we found out. The more we did that, my wife and I actually got scared because we went, you know, the law of attraction is pretty powerful. And when you focus on it that intensely, what you thought and what you had planned to do in eight months actually starts showing up in six months. And what you planned on doing in six months actually starts showing up in three months. Wow. Before long you go, this is kind of like cheating or scary or something weird. But it does. It really makes a big difference. So that's part of this too. If you want to get involved, we can get into that goal setting for you personally and see what it is that you need to do. Because really, it's not like there's, how can I say this? Paul thinks a good example. He's really good at what he does, and he's ten times better than I'd ever be doing that kind of personal development. But really, all you need is to work with somebody and say, hey, I just want to, you and me, I just want to work with you and me, we'll both set our goals, and we're not going to beat each other up over it. It's just going to be like brainstorming. When you start doing masterminding, things happen way more than they would if you're doing it all by yourself. You just don't have the same energy. So when you, when you pick somebody, it doesn't matter if it's even me, and you start doing that as a group together, it makes a huge difference in your life. But it's a lot of work. You know, more than usually what happens, but if you're serious about doing something, that's another avenue to do to help move you forward on this real estate stuff that you guys want to do or you wouldn't be here, especially at the very end of the day. <laughs> you know, most people are gone. I want to thank you guys very much for being here today. And, uh, you know, give us all a call. All the people you've met here, don't forget it. They're there to help you out. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.